Hi there, this is Nick Bogart with Sweetwater. And today we're going to be talking about the Boss LS2 line selector pedal and also the fine art of switching several stomp boxes with one stomp rather than several stomps. If you're a guitar pedal fanatic like me, I'm sure you've seen and lusted after those wonderfully complex but cool pedal switching looping systems that some of our heroes use. They're amazing. It allows with one stomp to switch on several boxes and with another stomp, switch them all off. That said, I'd love nothing more than to have that ability to switch on and off several pedals with one single stomp, as opposed to my usual river dancing, tap dancing idiocy on stage. The bottom line is this, I can't afford to do that because it loses my focus from my playing and I need all the focus on this I can because technically I suck. Now, a way around it is to get a multiple effects processor, and some of those are really, really good. They're affordable, they do a bunch of stuff, but to me, there's nothing that looks as cool and sounds as cool or has the vibe as my favorite stomp boxes in a big array on a stage, because it's the way it should be. So, what do you do if you've got a bunch of pedals, you want to use them all, but you don't want to be a river dancer on stage? Here is our salvation, my friends, the Boss LS2 line selector pedal. It has two loops, which means I can put two arrays of pedals together and then switch between them with as many on or off in each array as I like with only one stump of my foot. I like it, so let's get into it. As you can see, the LS2 has three knobs, a green one, a red one, and a white one. It also has a switch. It also has two LEDs, a green one and a red one, and they obviously correspond to the knobs. We'll explain more about that in a minute. It also has three jacks on each side. Why does it have a total of six jacks? Easy. Guitar in, guitar out, and then send and return for each of the two loops, loops A and loops B. So a send and return for each one, so six in total. In oh yeah, one other thing. On the back of this fine unit, you'll see not only is there an input for an external power supply, but there's an output. What's that output for? Let me show you. This fine device, if you get one of these from Boss or someone else, you can actually daisy chain power to several other Boss pedals within your pedal system. So pretty cool. So this is a mother load for other pedals, avoiding the use of batteries if you so wish. And there you have it. Now let's take a closer look at the three knobs. We'll start with the green and the red. These are both level controls. The green one is the level control for loop A. The red one is the level control for loop B. And they basically go from counterclockwise, which is minus infinity, dBs, which means off, silence, right the way up to plus 20 dBs. So this is cool. So you can balance both loops. You can use them to even boost the amp as well. If you've got an amp that's on the edge of distortion, you can actually use this to push it over the edge. And I'll show you how to do that in a minute, just by merely dead patching that loop. Then we come to the last knob, the white one, and that's the mode selector. And there are six modes you can switch from, so let's quickly run through each one because it gives you a wide variety of options and they're all pretty practical. Right, so here are the six choices you can get from the mode switch. The first one is switching between loop A and loop B. So one press, the red light will be on, the next press, the green light will be on, either one telling me which loop is activated. The second mode is switching between loop A and bypass. So when there are no lights on, i.e. the green light for loop A, my guitar is going straight to the input and straight out of the output. It's not going through loop A. When I hit this and the green light comes on, that tells me loop A is activated and that's where the signal goes. The next option is the same exact thing, but for loop B. So this time off means bypass, if you will. And when the red light lights up, when I hit the pedal, that means I'm going through loop B. Got it? Three-way switching. Loop A. Green light, loop B, red light, no light, bypass, which is cool. So you can have three options there, but they go in a circle. So it goes loop A, loop B, bypass, loop A, loop B, bypass, ad infinitum. Got me? Next one, which might seem a bit weird, but it's actually cool because of the level controls. You've got loops A and B mixed together with bypass. So both lights will come on, and then I determine how loud each loop is relative to each other with the level controls, and then I can bypass it. So you might get some weird and wonderful effects. might be really useful for recording. So you can pulse a chorus way down and have something else like a flanger higher up. Does that make sense? All with one guitar signal. Last but by no means least, number six is the output selector. 
This means I can use this as an amp selection switch. So I go into the input with my guitar, then I take the output to one amp, loop A send to another amp, and loop B send to another amp. And then as I switch through, no light means I'm going straight to the output to whatever amp that is. Green light tells me I'm going to the amp on send from loop A, and red tells me send from loop B. Got it? And the other thing I can do with this, and there's a big sheet that comes with this when you buy it, I can actually use this to mix two guitars to the same amp, which is pretty cool, just by using the two loops. So buy the pedal, it'll show you how to do it with a very simple diagram that even I can understand. None more simple. First off, let's assume you're using an amp that's overdriven, because like me, clean is something you hear on other records, you don't use it personally. But then we'll get into clean in a minute. But let's assume the amp is crunch, so I'm going to set up loop B for my lead sound, and loop A I'm going to have for my rhythm. And what I'm going to do first is I'm going to dead patch that loop and just use the LS2 as a booster just to goose the amp a little bit more for my rhythm sound, and then the other pedals in the loop B will be my lead sound. Got it? Makes sense? Let's take a look at what I've done. Right, we set up the first scenario. We're using a crunchy amp, and we're using loop A just to goose the front end of the amp. So uh, I can't be bothered to bend down, so excuse me, give me that, thank you very much. My handy dandy pointer stick. So here we go, here's my line selector. As you can see, I've dead patched loop A. And so when it's on green, I can determine how much gain I've got on that channel and nothing else is going through it. Then in loop B, I've got all of this fine stuff. So I've got the phase shifter, my DS1, the 40th anniversary, the flange for that silly noise, some delay to help hide my flaws. And then on both, from the output, I've got a noise suppressor because I'm pretty klutzy with my playing. So it makes sense. So let's goose this amp with loop A so we've got a little bit more girth just by using this purely as a booster. You with me? Cool. So as you can see from the pedal, I'm on loop A because the green light is on. And as you can see, the green control, that level control is at 12 o'clock, so I'm on Unity. So this is what the amp sounds like without any goosing from my dead patched loop A. <laughs> ah, it's okay. Let's goose that bad boy, shall we? Check this out. Okay, I've put it to 3.3, which is Dimebag Daryl approved. It's actually 3.33, if truth be told. Now let's hear the sound again. Cool, so now that's set up, I'm just gonna switch between my dead patch loop A for my rhythm, goosing the amp a bit, and this fine array of pedals for my lead. So brace yourself for some really bad playing but hopefully good tone. Okay, I've just set up Spaghetti Junction, nothing to do with the road system in Birmingham, England, which is a nightmare, but this is a spaghetti of cable, and it will all make sense in a minute. As you can see, I've now put three pedals in loop A. They're all switched off, and the level for loop A, the green knob, is at 12 o'clock, so it's unity. So let's hear the amp by itself. So this is me setting up this pedal board, if you will, for clean crunch and lead using a totally clean amp, which means you can walk into any place, set the amp to clean, and if you've got this system, you can rock and roll instantly, allegedly. So here we go. This is what the amp sounds like. Pretty um, run-of-the-mill clean. Nothing fancy, nothing spanky, nothing dirty, just clean. Now let's hear loop A with clean. So as you can see, I'm on loop A, as you can see from the green light. I've got the compressor and sustainer on, and also the CE2W, a fine chorus device, and that's for my clean. Then when I want to go to crunch, I'm going to step on another DS1. Look, I've got the orange one and the black one. Two DS1s. Yes, you can do it. Kind of twins, but they're not the same color, but that's all good. So let's hear clean going into crunch, then we'll go into lead. And for lead, I've got the phase shifter PH3, the DS1, and the DM2W. 
Um, both channels are running through the noise suppressor of the NS2 just to keep any unwanted noise out of the system. With me? So there you have it. With two mere stomps of my foot, I can go from clean to crunch to lead using this fine system below. And as you can see, I've got a bunch of pedals in there. A total of nine. Wow. Here's the clean. Then I want to go to crunch, so I'm just going to hit the DS1. And then last but by no means least, lead just by going from loop A to loop B. Oh, by the way, if you heard reverb there and you're looking at this array of pedals going, where's that coming from? The answer is from the amp. No, the 2525C from Marshall doesn't have reverb built in, but it has a fine series effects loop. So I've got the Boss RV6 in that effects loop to give me that reverb. The reason it's not in there, I just leave it on all the time because I like playing in a cave. And there you have it, my friends. With your collection of pedals, this looping system from Boss, and also your vast imagination, the impossibilities are endless. How you configure these two loops is entirely up to you. Just have fun with it, okay? Now, I know what you're thinking, but Nick, this is all cool, but it's a spaghetti mess. Some of the gigs I play, there's 800 bands playing. It's throw and go, we don't get a sound check. How can I possibly do this on a stage? The answer is simple, my friends, let me show you. You can get a pedal board from Boss. Let's check it out. Right, thanks to the magic of digital editing, I'm back with one of two Boss pedal boards. The first one is the BCB3. This is the baby boy, and I can fit three pedals in here. I haven't bothered to wire them up, but they fit sturdily. Check this out. I'll just open this up, and there are my pedals. Pretty cool. So I can use that for one loop. So what do I do with the bigger loop? Well, check this out. I go to a bigger board. So we needed a bigger board and we've got one. This is the PCB60 from Boss. Look at this bad boy here. This comes with everything you need. I'll open up a minute. You can fit up to six pedals in here. Now this case comes with everything you need. It comes with the patch cables. It comes with a power supply. It comes with sends and returns. It comes with everything you could possibly need. So I can fit my other loop into this. So with two little cases, I'm ready to rock. Let's take a look inside this just so you can see how cool it is. So here's the insides of this bad boy. Check it out, you've got an input, two outputs, a send, two returns, power in, power out. Comes with all the cables, comes with this neat little thing so you can power every pedal in here so all six can be powered, so. Think about it, armed with this and this. I walk into my gig, I plug stuff in, I get two cables, I plug into the amp and I'm ready to rock, so. Pretty cool. And there you have it, the Boss LS2 line selector pedal. A pretty fine device, I'm sure you agree. And I hope this brief look into some of the vast potential it has will get your furtive mind thinking of some creative ideas of your own. Have fun with it, use your pedals and minimize your stomping. So before I sign off, as always, if you wanna know more information about the LS2 or any Boss pedal or the pedal boards I just showed you, go to sweetwater.com or better still, Call your sales engineer and he or she will be only too glad to assist you further in your quest for tone. This is Nick Bocott signing off and once again I'm going to use the LS2 to in a single stomp activate a number of boss pedals to hide the flaws in my horrible playing. Have a good one. See ya.